Oh man, that's cool. Hey, what's going on guys? Alex here with TFL Bike and we have a really exciting video for you today. Mostly we do motorcycles on the channel, but every once in a while we have an e-bike come in because that's kind of the new craze. But this is what started all of that, motorized bicycles. So I have my friend Paul here, um, and he brought some really cool bikes. Thanks, Paul, Paul, for bringing these by. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, of course. We actually met at a brewery in Lafayette. You <laughs> ran into Case and I, we were sitting having a beer, and you were like, I've got some awesome bikes I gotta show you guys. And a couple weeks later, here we are. So this is a Whizzer, I know that much. Yeah. What's the model name of this? It's a Whizzer Model H. Okay. Uh, Manufactured in 1947. Yes, yeah, so your dad actually bought this brand new back in the day, which is pretty crazy. <laughs> That's right. Um, but this is, you got to tell me a little bit about this because I don't know too much. It's a, a kit motor basically, so you would put it together yourself, or not the motor, but you'd get the motor and put it into a bicycle yourself, right? Yeah, I, a lot of times in those days, a lot of things came as kits, radios, uh, what have you, and, and this engine kit uh, came in a box packed in hay and instruction for some 12 year old kid to grab the tools who they're very confident at the time to <laughs> put these together and, and mount it to a bicycle. That's my dad bought this when he was a sophomore in high school uh, in uh, Hayes, Kansas. And um, you know, here we are, like he rode it to town time to time, uh, rode it around the far family farm. And, and uh, you know, it's just been a family treasure, you know, to have something in the family for this long yeah. and still get to enjoy it and have other people enjoy it. It's been a pleasure. Very cool. So this frame itself, you said, is a Schwinn bicycle frame, right? And it's not the original frame your dad put this engine into. Yeah, yeah. So my dad had originally bought uh, the kit engine and mounted it to a, a Gamble's department store, Hiawatha. And it was probably a middleweight uh, balloon tire bicycle that uh, quite frankly wasn't built for what these engines do to bikes and the spokes aren't heavy. Um, shortly thereafter, he had saved up enough money to buy this Schwinn purpose-built uh, frame. It's, it's, it honestly is a, a balloon tire bicycle, a uh, beach cruiser with a few distinct uh, differences with respect to the rear fender and rear frame pieces being uh, uh, cleared of the belt. Okay. So, so you know, it's it's it's. And you're talking about right here, yeah, right? So where it's kind of notched out for the belt. That's right, right in here, and then right on the uh, on the fender. Otherwise, and we can look at the other bike later. Is yeah. is that uh, uh, if you didn't have this uh, available, then you took a pair of tin snips and you cut the, the fender <laughs> and you hope that your uh, your frame would clear. <laughs> nice. So tell me a little more about this motor. What's the displacement? What are we looking at here? So, you know, Schwinn, this was, uh, or uh, Wizard, they had originally started these motors back in 1939 and started to make mild improvements. Those early models, uh, very lightweight materials. They were meant to park on your existing bicycles. And, but they were made of, of softer metals, you know, poor quality pot metal castings and stuff. And this was really the model, Model H, that uh, really gave them their, their run. It's a 138cc motor. Okay. Um, does, has about two and a half horsepower to it. Not a lot, but uh, you can get up to about 35, 40 downhill if you're uh, willing to do it. Your center of gravity is pretty high up on this seat. But... That's about as fast as I'd want to go on one of these anyway. <laughs> but you, so. you feel every bump and that Springer front fork and uh, front expander drum brake that Schwinn built and mounted on these heavier bikes uh, are definitely worth uh, the investment if you're going to build one of these yourself. Yeah, totally. Um, and yeah, I mean, your front suspension is all contained right up here. So yeah, not a lot of travel on this. You're definitely going to feel every little bump going down the road. That's for sure. Yeah. But just a gorgeous piece of machinery here. It's really cool to look at and uh, even cooler that it's just been a, a family piece in your family for such a long time. Um, just kind of looking at some of the details on this. One of the things I really love is this flashlight up here. That's all it is, right? Yeah, it's a flashlight yeah. and a holder. And now that wasn't original to, to dad's bike. Okay. I, I went ahead and bought it. That was actually uh, something I wanted to have just from a safety perspective, but I wanted to keep it original. Uh, the flashlight actually came out of my grandfather's uh, fishing tackle box. Nice. So again, I keep things a little bit more uh, 
in the family if I can and, and helps make the story a little bit more fun. Yeah, and then it looks like we've got some instrumentation here. So actually yeah. a, a speedometer with, you know, a rolling clock on it, yeah. odometer as well. Stuart Warner, uh, they made uh, bicycle speedometers and, and it just runs down onto a little uh, fiber cog that uh, mounts to the front axle. Okay. And uh, works great. And then I see, is this just like a little bell for going down the road? Yeah, a little, Whoa. it's a little tight, but. Nice. And then there's a, a Comet airplane logo on that. As I was reading a little bit up on this bike with some of the history. Um, the company, I guess, Whizzer was involved in airplanes before. Yeah, the, the people who designed and patented this engine and some of the technology for the, the pulley drive uh, was Breen Taylor out of Los Angeles. And that's why you'll see on the tank decals, Los Angeles and Pontiac, Michigan. Okay. Uh, but they, um, they were airplane parts manufacturers and they got the idea and concept and patented all that uh, back in 38, 39. Uh, if you go onto Google documents, you can find all those original scans, which is fantastic to kind of read through yeah. and, and see where uh, the wizard patent had been used further down the line on other things like farm equipment. Um, but they were really designing it to be lightweight, center balance, and make the ride as uh, unobtrusive as possible for the bicyclist. Nice. And uh, we've got no gears to shift through, right? So you've got pedals and, you know, going to a small rear sprocket on the back, and then other side of the wheel, you have this belt drive for the motor. So I guess a two-speed bike, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like Sort of. First gear is uh, you're looking at your two legs pumping uh, the original chain drive. It's, uh, it's actually a... Uh, skip tooth chain, which is kind of fun. It's an older style chain. Um, and then once you kind of get pedaling and the engine's running, uh, get about five mile an hour or so, you can uh, let off on the clutch and that engages this belt drive uh, off of the, uh, the engine pulley system. Okay, so when you pull the clutch, the, the belt literally pulls off of- It pulls yeah, off. Yeah, look at that, it's yeah. so cool. Nice. And then I wanted to show this plate in the rear too, because you did go ahead and, you know, a few years ago, restore this bike and kind of clean it up, make it, make it prettier, but didn't do anything to the original plate that was on there. And yeah. that's really cool. So is that a, a Kansas plate, I'm guessing, from yeah, 1948? 1948, even though I said it was a 47, there's two things I didn't restore. One was the uh, Liberty badge on the front. Okay. And this license plate. I wanted to keep some of that patina. Uh, especially this, because this is the original license plate that my dad had to register with the state of Kansas, nice. with the county. That is uh, super cool. And we have we have the Kansas title, and and stapled to it was the uh, original uh, uh, registration. And yeah, matching numbers and everything. Do you, so, do you know what he paid for it back in 1947? Well, in 48, since he had registered it late, a year late, he was penalized. Okay. And so 48, he was. Uh, uh, the 1948 registration, I believe it was five dollars, but then he was penalized eight bucks. So it's basically paying 47 in the rear, and then another three dollars. So yeah. it's thirteen dollar total to, to get it to registered. get it registered. And do you know what they would have gone for back in the day? Uh, the kit engine price yeah. was about ninety seven dollars advertised. Okay. And the bicycle frame probably another sixty five dollars. And I have those original receipts as well. That nice. was that was the receipts uh, bill of sales for the engine and the bicycle. Uh, we found uh, around Christmas time going through paperwork in in twenty nineteen and uh he must have been stoked to come I, across that I, I i cried with joy <laughs> yeah. i i literally this those are the the only thing we don't have is a picture of him as a kid riding with the bike That's, that, that would be the holy grail that would complete the pic yes but we're thrilled with it the way it is and uh do you have any idea what these would go for today you know that you you can look at the the online auctions and uh the uh, the larger collector car auctions, and, and I've had experts talk to me through a bunch of different things. And uh, although this is a priceless, uh, yeah, bike, I mean you're never going to get rid of this. It, it would it would take a lot to uh, to persuade me that this would go away. Yeah. Uh, but you know, similar condition ones as is can go from three to four thousand um, dollars. We have a lot of provenance with not only being a one bike, a one family bike. Uh, we have all the paperwork, right? Uh, owner's manual, uh, title, registration papers. This is basically as complete as one gets. Yeah, it, yeah. It, uh, except for the box and hay that the the engine right. came in, right? So in the tag that probably hung on the handlebars. Nice. Uh, so it, it, I've been quoted anywhere from seven to ten grand. Okay. Uh, on a good day at an auction, if somebody's really wanting to add this to their collector auction, uh, 
uh, collector uh, collection, it could be something that could run a little bit over that. Yeah. So, but I, again, that's that's all. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter. It's all dreaming, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool. Well, I am stoked to get this out on the road, and I'm thrilled you're going to let me take it for a ride. Absolutely. Um, but first, I want to walk over to your trailer here because you've got sure. a couple more bikes here, and one of them on the outside is also a Whizzer. Um, this one hasn't been in your family for some time, right? Right, right. But this one's got all the patina and dense dings it's been used <laughs> it looks really cool so tell me a little bit about this one yeah i call this a farm kid special so this is an early model h uh production number serial number on it is around fifteen thousand model versus fifty seven thousand, which is on on dad's uh i call it the farm kid special because it it's got more fender braces than necessary because you know you've got cracks and rattles <laughs> um you know the exhaust pipe's been cut uh, the fender over here has been cut pretty severely, but it's more or less how I found it. And I found it on a fence row on a farm in Longmont and uh, worked with the owner and, and he uh, let me take it home. It was missing a rod and piston. Uh, fortunately, I knew how to do a lot of this stuff or had the connections to, to kind of complete the bike, but it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. And one of the major differences with this bike versus my dad's is dad's is still running on the original points but i put an electronic module in this one okay and it seems to have a lot better spark more time spark and, right. and so this one really flies but it it's it's a bit of a death trap um there's no front brake <laughs> and uh, uh that front spring is is a softer spring built for bicycles versus the one that's purpose built for a motorized bicycle over here so uh it's it 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 can get away from you, but uh, it's still a lot of fun. Which one do you ride more out of the two? Oh, I ride both. Both a ton? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's too much fun to uh, uh, not ride them. Yeah, and then this isn't a wizard here, but I know we can't just brush over it without <laughs> talking about it because people are going to have questions. So, oh, leave that on there. I want to talk <laughs> about that. So he brought three br bikes here, and this is a small trailer, but he's got some pool noodles on here to make the handlebars kind of rest in a nice way, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, it's just kind of my, my mother of invention, right? Yeah. So uh, this is a 1947 Luray power cycle. Um, these were built in Milwaukee, uh, Wisconsin, and by a pair of brothers named Larry and Ray, hence the name. They were uh, uh, professional pipe benders uh, as a business, and they decided to get into, like a lot of people were, uh, the mini bike and motorized bicycle craze. Now this isn't a bicycle, it's actually a motorbike, no pedals, uh, but uh, floorboards with a drum brake on the back. This is their own frame design and girder front fork. But because they were rushing to get this to market, they had to rely on partnerships. So they partnered with Schwinn to build uh, the fenders Okay. And then they worked with uh, third-party suppliers for the lights. So this is a, a brand of light that you can you could buy at the hardware store called Make a Light, and that is the same brand as the tail light as well. So they had front and back uh, illumination. Uh, and how do they illuminate that? The engine, which is a Clinton uh, kickstart motorcycle or uh, motor that uh, they would put on. That Clinton made motors for everything: lawn tractors. Uh, lawn mowers, anything, uh, but they made a certain model that also had a kickstart assembly on the other side. And that uh, uh, is really kind of the rare piece of this uh, motor. That was probably the hardest part that I found, but I, I've made acquaintances throughout the internet and the country and, and uh, had this one purpose made all to bring this uh, motorcycle back to Nice. back to its glory yeah it's just gorgeous and i mean not that the wizards aren't cool but like you can tell this is more of a motorcycle the way the frame is designed around the tank and it all kind of nestles in there and you know you've got guards around the engine and floorboards like you said um and, really and, really cool and don't discount it's got a 26 inch bicycle front tire and a 20 inch bicycle rear tire oh look at that and uh you know playing with gear ratios it's all belt drive with through a uh, uh a jack stand behind the motor but you, you had uh, this crazy amount of, of great torque, uh, and it's since it's so low to the ground, it just cruises. It's not fast by any means, but it's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's gorgeous. All right, well, I am used to a traditional motorcycle with a key and a kill switch. I have no idea how to get this going. So before, <laughs> 
I put my helmet on and take it around the block. Can you just kind of show me how you actually get it started up? Yeah, you bet. You cool. bet. So it's super simple, but it's all hand memory at this point. You have on this side of the control, you have a, a, a compression release and a throttle. Okay. Uh, to increase the throttle, you pull it toward you. To decrease, you go back. It'll be obvious once it's running. The compression release is it's in the release uh, position now, and that's really to help you through this flathead release the, the compression within the cylinder and the valves and allow you to pedal. Um, on the left-hand side, we have that clutch, and you can see I can pedal more freely. Yep. Then if that's pushed in. Yeah, and on a 50-degree boulder day. Yeah. So you want that out, compression release out. So it's free spinning now, but when we take it off of the uh, kickstand, you'll pull on this and just rock it forward. Cool. It's that easy. Yeah. Let it warm up a little bit. And then, just like a regular motorcycle, clutch in, throttle, when you come to a stop, throttle. Yeah, clutch in and, and uh, you got a front brake here and it's a little soft and then the uh, rear brake won't skid on you okay. on the coaster and you can kind of balance both of those. So rear brake is a bicycle brake, right? Yeah. With, you, with your feet, pedal yeah, backwards. Just like the 80s. Cool. All right, well, let's let her warm up. I'm gonna put my helmet on and uh, I'm excited to take this for a ride. All right, well, I feel a little bit ridiculous wearing my Arai motorcycle helmet that I normally wear on a racetrack, but I've got my helmet all rigged up for audio here, so we're doing it anyway. I'm gonna try and give this a go, see if I can get it running on my own. So, start with the compression release out, right? So you don't want to go all the way in, just a, just a little bit. Too much? There we go. So once I drop off the stand, I'm going to want to clutch in, pedal up to like five miles an hour, and then give it some throttle, right? So pull the, and then pull the kickstand up too. After you put the drop stand up, I'll have you. Okay. Whew. Here we go. Oh man, that's cool. <laughs> Takes a little bit of getting used to. So pedaling around really ain't that bad at all. Make sure my compression release is all the way in. So yeah, just to pedal around as a normal bike. Doesn't feel heavy, doesn't feel too bad. And then once you're up to speed, let off the clutch and feather that throttle in just a little bit. And we're moving. Oh, she cruises. <laughs> that brake doesn't do anything though. Oh, this is faster than I thought it was gonna be. It is crazy how easy it is to ride though. I feel like my hand positioning is weird though. Oh, exactly, I guess yeah, you just use your thumb. Works just fine. Once you're stopped, you pedal it like a normal bicycle. Yeah. Oh, this is fun. And then once you're up to speed, clutch out, a little bit of throttle. Oh yeah. So it definitely takes a little bit of thinking for me to, you know, get all the steps right. But it's really not that hard. Sounds good too. It's got a good little rumble to it. This motor feels solid does not feel like a 75 year old motor or however old this is 70 some years
Uh, I wish I was in like a more densely populated area because I think this is a vehicle that you would get some crazy looks on. <laughs> and you feel every bump. This is fun! So to shut it off, you just compression release. Oh, this is so cool. I was doing great until I tried pulling in the driveway and I bumped the seat back a little bit. That thing has been that way. See this right here? Yeah. And this, like these weird gears inside. If you want to kick, just drop that other side drops. So that's fine. Yeah, it's crazy how easy it is to ride. I feel like the first time I pulled out, I was like, all right, I was thinking a lot, but yeah, once you're going for a minute or two, it's it's easy. And I'm sure, like here, there's no one out here, but I'm sure you go in a populated area and everyone is staring at you. And you weren't kidding about the bumps. You can feel every bump. And at the start, I was like definitely a little squirrely because I think I was too tight on the controls and thinking too hard about what I was doing. But yeah, like one lap around the block and I was having a blast laughing in my helmet. So thank you very much, Paul. Really appreciate the opportunity. Um, and hopefully we'll have you back sometime with some more cool stuff.